And this session will be chaired and moderated by Mr. Haufang. So the floor is yours. Please Research 尊敬的穆尼鲁昌安少将，尊敬的各位来宾，大家好。Honorable Uh, and the first of all, to just establish this cooperation in the anti-radical and also the anti-terrorist, and it will enhance the interconnectivity of this BCM economic corridor. Why I put forward this issue uh, just on this forum, Today uh, was based on the following uh, two points of thinking. Yishi 一旦这些问题处理不好，就会导致不安全问题的发生，就会严重影响梦中一免经济走廊建设的进程。On one hand, there are still some problems to be addressed in the construction of the interconnectivity, and also the interworking between the Yunnan and Bangladesh. We are not uh, discussing uh, together the, about the issue because we find that there are still some prominent problems in the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. 
such as the wide construction coverage rate, many factors involved, uh, geographic political complexities, and even economic development, national contradictions, and illegal immigrants, etc. It will cause problems of insecurity and severely influence the process of the construction of BCM economic corridor if these issues couldn't be handled properly. Yeah, 密切经济关系就是在现有的诸多合作机制的基础上所以我们要努力地建立一个良好的环境，所以我们要努力地建立一个良好的环境，所以我们要努力地建立一个良好的环境，所以我们要努力地建立一个良好的环境，所以我们要努力地建立一个良好的环境，所以我们要努力地建立
强化底线思维，以坚决态度、有力措施，严厉打击各种暴力恐怖犯罪活动。这充分显示了中国政府反激进与反恐的坚定决心和强大力量。二零一五年十一月二十三日，中国外交部发言人洪磊主持例行记者招招招待会时表示，恐怖主义。是人类社会的毒瘤，需要国际社会共同应对。中国是国际反恐的重要参与方，我们反对一切形式的恐怖主义，支持国际社会采取的反恐努力。我们呼吁有关各方进一步加强协调，在联合国框架下形成反恐合力。中国中方愿与国际社会共同努力。打击恐怖主义，维护世界和平与安宁。十二月十六号，中国主办第二届世界互联网大会。作为全球互联网用户数量最多的国家，提出共同的构建网络空间命运共同体，推动网络空间互联互通、共享共治，为搭建一个全球网络反恐合作新平台做出了巨大的努力，受到了一致的好评。Terrorist is one of the main threats to the world in the 21st century. It is not welcome in any case and in any culture, and is to be condemned. Since American 911 incident, China has successfully participated in international anti-radical and anti-terrorist cooperation. The anti-terrorist cooperation between China and the USA has made remarkable breakthroughs. And the East Turkestan terrorist forces, which has long harassed China, has become an international public hazard as Al Qaeda. China's participation in international anti-terrorist cooperation in multilateral forums, such as Shanghai Cooperation Organization (SCO) and Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation (APEC), has developed to a deeper level. It marks that China starts making even greater strides in international anti-radical and anti-terrorist cooperation, and a broader road is in front of us. After the violent terrorist case happened in Kunming railway station in Yunnan province on March 2, 2014, Xi Jinping, General Secretary of China, pointed out that we must have acute awareness of the serious complexity of the anti-terrorist situation, strengthen the bottom line thinking, and crack down on all kinds of violent terrorist crimes with a firm attitude and a strong measures. It fully manifested the firm destination and strong power of Chinese government in countering radical and terrorist. When presiding over a regular press conference on November 23rd, 2015, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Hong Lei said that terrorists is a cancer of human society, which requires the common response from the international community. China is an important participant in the international anti-terrorist operation, and we oppose all forms of terrorists and support the anti-terrorist efforts made by the international community. We advocate all the relevant parties to further strengthen coordination and form a joint force against terrorists under the framework of the United Nations. China is ready to work with the international community to fight against terrorists and maintain peace and tranquility in the world. On December 16th, China hosted the Second World Conference on Internet. <coughs> As a country with the largest number of internet users in the world, China is highly praised for proposing to build a common cyberspace destiny community, promote cyberspace connectivity, share and manage together, and make great efforts to build a new platform for global cooperation in countering cyber terrorists. Uh, 二十七日，也就是我们昨天到达的时间，中国全国人大通过了《反恐怖主义法》，习近平主席签署签令就公布了。Please let me just make some conversation on news yesterday when we arrived at Dhaka. 
that as a matter of fact, the CPC of China government has approved the anti-terrorist law. 这是中国在现有法律规定的基础上制定的一部专门的反恐怖主义法。This is a official、uh, law against and countering the anti、uh, and anti-terrorist. 这既是当前打击恐怖主义的现实需要，也是我们国家坚定的负起国际责任的一个表示。And as a matter of fact, that this is not only a measures to counter the terrorist, but also a strong position that we are going to just fight against the terrorist. 呃，这部法律在总结近年我国防范和打击恐怖活动的经验。借鉴国外有效做法的基础上制定的。And this、uh, legal law was actually based on the prevention and also a, a big、uh, just a fight against the terrorists based on the very good international experiences. 它的出台必将为打击暴恐活动、维护国家安全、公共安全和人民生命财产的安全，为为为加强国际反恐合作。提供更加坚实的法律支撑和保证。The main fact that the issue of this、uh, law will just、uh, be serving、uh, very well just for the legal basis to secure the safety of the people, of the public, and the life. 我们深知，孟加拉国长期致力于反激进与反恐。早在二零零五年。孟加拉国总理卡利亚齐亚就重申，要把反恐斗争进行到底，对恐怖主义分子绝不妥协。今年恰逢孟中建交四十周年，四十年来，两国已建立起紧密的伙伴关系。中国视孟加拉国为重要的合作伙伴，双方高层愿加强在经贸、金融、基础设施建设。人文领域的交流与合作，积极参与梦中一免经济走廊框架下的合作，两国不断深化的合作表明，滇梦加强反激进与反恐战略合作已具有良好的基础。We are well aware that Bangladesh has long been committed to anti-radical and anti-terrorist. As early as 2005, Begum Kadar Zia, Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Has actually reiterated to fight against terrorists in the end and never comply, compromise with the terrorists. This year coincides with the 40th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Bangladesh. A close partnership has been established between the two countries over the past four decades, and China regards Bangladesh as an important cooperative partner. The two sides are willing to strengthen exchanges and cooperation in economy, trade, finance, infrastructure, and culture, and actively participate in cooperation under the framework of BCM Economic Corridor. The deepening cooperation between the two countries indicates that a good foundation has been made for the strengthening of anti-radical and anti-terrorist strategic cooperation between India and Bangladesh. 长期以来，联合国一直主张世界各国应加强合作，为消灭恐怖主义进行坚决斗争。今年九月二十四日，联合国又在反恐峰会上一致通过决议，积极应对恐怖主义。The United Nations has maintained that all countries in the world should strengthen cooperation and resolutely fight against terrorism for a long time. In the counter-terrorist summit on September 24th this year, the United Nations has unanimously adopted a resolution on actively responding to terrorists. We have在此次会议上提出实施滇梦加强反激进与反恐合作，必将得到国际社会和中国、孟加拉两国政府的积极肯定和大力支持。Our proposal of the implementation of anti-radical and anti-terrorist strategic cooperation between India and Bangladesh will certainly be affirmed and supported by the international community. 
as well as the governments of China and Bangladesh. 二是中国以梦中一冕四国中的印度，已建立了反激进与反恐的国际合作，有先例可参照。今年十一月，中国公安部与印度内政部发表声明，承诺开展反恐合作。将按照两国领导人的战略规划，务实推进反恐等执法安全合作，深化多边层面的协调配合，有效应的应对共同的挑战，共同维护两国的安全与稳定，为下一步在梦中一冕区域开展反激进与反恐的国际的合作开了先河。For another, China has established an international cooperation against radical and terrorist with India, which can provide a pre precedent for reference. In November this year, Chinese Minister of Public Security issued a statement with the Ministry of Internal Affairs of India, pro promising to carry out anti-terrorist cooperation. Both sides will follow the strategic planning of the leaders of the two countries pr practically promote security cooperation in law enforcement, including anti-terrorist deepen coordination and cooperation at multi-level, effectively cope with common challenges and jointly safeguard the security and stability of the both countries. It will set up precedent for the international cooperation against the radical and terrorists in the region of Bangladesh, China, India, and Myanmar. 三是，中国已有在大美共和此期已开展国际合作的成功经验和模式，可供借鉴。有三方面的经验：第一，中国在推进大美共和此期已合作的过程中，通过加强对此期已合作的新形式。新问题的前瞻研究，发现、寻求合作各方的利益交汇点，提出的倡议具有很强的可操作性。第二，通过以开放的心态，妥善应对挑战，加强各国以及各机制之间的沟通和协调，构建共同利益，减少了竞争与冲突。促进了 GMS 的可持续发展。第三，通过推进与相关国家开展功能性的务实合作，为 GMS 的合作和发展注入了新的活力。比如，在境外替代种植和联合进度的过程中，中国把美国、日本等域外大国作为重要利益的相关方。积极争取他们加大对缅甸的投入，然后以及参与老挝北部罂粟替代种植的项目和毒品治理的投入，不仅有助于境外替代种植和联合禁毒目标的实现，也增进了其他国家对中国实施境外替代种植和联合禁毒的理解和支持。总体来讲。GMS 的合作成功的根本经验是大力发展经济，改善当地民众的生活，并通过经济合作来解决安全问题。Last of all, China's successful experience and mode of international cooperation in the Greater Mekong Subregion (GMS) can also be used for reference. These, there are three aspects of experience. For a start. In promoting the cooperation in GMS, China identified and pursued the meeting point of the interests of all parties and put forward much operational proposals through further prospect study on the new situation and new problem in this region. Next, competition and conflicts were reduced, and the sustainable development of GMS was advanced through properly responding to challenges with an open mind, strengthening their communication and coordination between countries and mechanisms, and is constructing common interests. Last, the pragmatic cooperation with the relevant countries injected a new vitality into the cooperation and development of GMS in the process of overseas alternative planting and joint drug control. China 
regarded the major foreign powers, including the United States and Japan, as important stakeholders, and actively strove for their more investment in topic alternative planting project and drug control in Myanmar and northern Laos. It not only helped fulfill the overseas alternative planting and joint drug control, but also increased the other country's understanding and support of China's implementation of the overseas alternative planting and joint drug control. Generally speaking, the fundamental experience of GMS cooperation is to develop the economy, improve the life of local people, and address security problems through economic cooperation. Thirdly, the establishment of anti-radical and anti-terrorist strategic cooperation can be started from the following five aspects. We believe that in the implementation of the anti-radical and anti-terrorist strategic cooperation, Yunnan and Bangladesh should construct relevant security mechanisms, constantly enhance mutual understanding and trust, and further strengthen security cooperation in law enforcement, so as to constantly strive to maintain regional security and stability, and probably handle major security and stability crises. Yan 加强与孟加拉国的协调与合作，进一步加强与孟加拉国政府和主要智库机构之间反击性与反恐方面的沟通，为颠孟友好合作营造良好的政策和娱乐氛围。In the first place, strengthen anti-radical and anti-terrorist propaganda cooperation. We are facing unprecedented and very serious threats of terrorists. Their fight against the terrorism has a stake in the national security, the vital interests of people, and the overall situation of reform, development, and stability. Therefore, we must take severe measures to suppress the blatant arrogance of terrorists to prevent the proliferation of information associated with extremist forces or terrorist activities. We should strengthen anti-radical and anti-terrorist propaganda cooperation, enhance coordination and cooperation with Bangladesh on the BCF platform, further the communication with the government and the main think tanks, and create a good policy and public opinion atmosphere for the cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh. Yunnan In the second place, we should hold a regular high-level security anti radical and anti-terrorist summit between Yunnan and Bangladesh. The think tanks on both sides should supply proposal for the high-level security anti-radical and anti-terrorist summit to respective central government. Both sides will discuss major issues on anti-radical and anti-terrorist in the summit. Third, 
恐怖组织及恐怖组织之间的关联情况的经验和信息的沟通，就打击反劫持、人质事件和其他恐怖主义行动交流经验，建立更为有效的反激进与反恐情报监控系统，有效防止恐怖主义威胁的发生。In the third place, we should enhance anti-radical and anti-terrorist information cooperation. The two sides should strengthen the experience and information exchange on terrorist activities, terrorist organizations, as well as the association among terrorist organizations, exchange experience on combating anti-hijacking, hostage-taking, and other acts of terrorism, establish a more effective anti-radical and anti-terrorist information monitoring system, and effectively prevent the occurrence of terrorist threats. 四是加强反激进与反恐的人才合作，建议双方复派专家工作组，加大力度培训反恐队伍，相互学习和借鉴，在防范和打击犯罪、应对反恐等方面的经验和做法，共同提高执法能力和水平。In the first place, we should strengthen the anti-radical and anti-terrorist talents cooperation. We suggest that the two sides exchange working group of experts, step up the training of anti-terrorist team, and learn from each other the experience and the practices in preventing and combating crimes and responding to anti-terrorist so as to improve the capacity and the standard of law enforcement. 五是加强反激进与反恐的执法合作，建立滇共执法合作机制，在此基础上加强双方在反激进与反恐、禁毒、打击网络犯罪、电信诈骗犯罪、经济犯罪、非法移民和非法翻译武器弹药及其他跨国犯罪的合作，加大力度防止洗钱和打击恐怖主义融资，切断。恐怖活动的资金来源，推动滇共执法安全合作长期健康稳定发展。In the fifth place, we should enhance the anti-radical and anti-terrorist cooperation in law enforcement. The law enforcement cooperation mechanism between Vietnam and Bangladesh should be established and on its basis. The two sides could strengthen cooperation in the fight against radicalism and terrorism, drug trafficking. Cybercrime, telecoms fraud, economic crime, illegal immigrants, illegal smuggling of weapons and ammunition, and other transboundary crimes, Incre increase efforts to prevent money laundering and terrorist financing, cut off funding sources of terrorist activities, and promote the long-term healthy and stable development of security cooperation of law enforcement. 我们相信，无论国际和地区形势怎么变，我们坚持巩固和深化滇共全面战略的协作，伙伴关系的方针不会变，致力实现滇共共同发展振兴的目标不会变，携手捍卫国际公平正义和世界和平稳定的决心不会变。希望在新的一年里，双方继续齐齐心协力，推动滇共互联互通。We believe that, however, the international and regional situation may change. We will adhere to the consolidation and deepening of the comprehensive strategic cooperation partnership between Vietnam and Bangladesh. The goal of common development and revitalization of both sides and the determination of defending international fairness and justice as well as peace and stability of the world. We hope that in the new year, the two sides will continue to work together to promote the interconnectivity and the interworking between Vietnam and Bangladesh and bring more tangible benefits to the people of both sides. That's all for my introduction. Thank you.
孟加拉国和平洋前研究所的研究员夏福克特·穆尼尔先生。So, uh, let, let me just introduce something about the next speaker, uh, Mr. Shafkot Vernier. He is currently active in the cyber security and data security issues. At present, Munir is working on cooperating with Islam groups and how to influence the Islamic community in the Asia Pacific. 展开这个领域的这个研究他签他这个参与了许多重大课题研究，在国内外刊物上发表了许多作品。他还参加了伊斯兰国呃亚洲安全峰会和在新加坡这个举行的香格里拉峰会。And uh, uh, he also just uh, uh, participated in a lot of the international forums that was held in Asia, in Singapore. Uh, Munir 先生呢是在呃新加坡南洋理工大学取得了这个博士学位。呃，他同时呢为呃世界各地一些重要刊物的这个撰写呃文章。呃，同时呢他也是呃很多重要研究机构的。重要的研究人员。He's not only the research fellow in the study of this field, and as a matter of fact, more importantly, is that his major is actually also in this part. He graduated from the the South Oceanic Science and Technology University in Singapore, and he got the actual doctor. Yeah, great. 所以，我非常欢迎今天的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡的来宾，来自新加坡
our reactions are more reactive in nature rather than being proactive. And in order to have, be a proactive in our actions, we need to understand what are the causes behind radicalization. Of course, there are multiple different factors, and it differs from one country to another, but there are certain factors which have been identified by international scholars which are probably common to most countries. To start with, the aspect of poverty, unemployment, and youth bulge is very important. Many of our countries, including Bangladesh, are affected very deeply by poverty. A large number of the population lives below the poverty line, and therefore uh, that has a direct effect on the kind of appeal that radical groups can have for them. Poverty or lack of economic growth can also lead to unemployment, as we have seen in Bangladesh and many other countries. And when you have a large group of unemployed youth, and it takes me to my next point about the youth bulge, because there is a certain bulge in the youth segment of the population, you sometimes provide a ready recruitment ground for radical groups. There are, of course, scholars who argue that terrorism or radicalization these days does not have anything to do with social inequality or deprivation. But in my studies and research over the last almost uh, eight, nine years, I have seen that for countries like Bangladesh, lack of good governance and lack of service delivery has a direct correlation to terrorism and radicalization. Quite often, terrorist groups or radical organizations have gone to rural areas where they have recruited people who were deeply felt, felt deeply aggrieved by the fact that they were not getting good governance and service delivery. However, that is not to suggest that people from affluent backgrounds or people who do not face social inequality and deprivation cannot be radicalized, as it has been proven recently with the advent of ISIS, but we must take into consideration that both factors exist. There are also issues of religious identity. There are issues of how religious identity manages to assimilate with other currents in society. And we see that particularly in the Western countries where the religious identity of one group, which is in a minority, can sometimes be affected by the overall changes in society and that leads to problems which eventually leads to radicalization. So while we do not want to single out one particular religion when it comes to radicalization, it is important for us to acknowledge that issues of religious identity do definitely play a role. The other uh, aspect which we have seen over the years is the aspect of freedom, participation, and political space. If individuals or, gr or groups are not given the right political space, are not given the uh, opportunity to express their views freely, or feel threatened as a lack of freedom, that can also have an effect on behind radicalization. But again, I would like to emphasize that these aspects differ from country to country. I've already talked about poor governance, but I would like to touch upon it again, that lack of good governance and problems in service delivery are often a major cause behind radicalization. The previous presenter has very aptly described the impact of internet and social media, and I could not agree more with that. Internet and social media in particular has emerged as a key vehicle for radicalization, especially since the advent of ISIS. We also need to understand that certain historical events or episodes in history of different countries, colonialism, etc., also have an effect which can be used by radical groups to get potential recruits. And we have seen that in a number of cases in the recent past. Ladies and gentlemen, today we can't talk about terrorism and radicalization without talking about the preeminent radical group that we are all faced with, which is Daesh or ISIS. Since the emergen official emergence of ISIS uh, in 2014, Within a very short span of time that this group has been able to expand its footprint very rapidly across the world. ISIS is now responsible for attacks in places as, far, uh, as diverse as Syria, to Paris, 
to Dhaka to even uh, their footprint has been found in places like Honduras and Guatemala. So that is how diverse their footprint is. And while we were quite accustomed to uh, the phenomenon of Al-Qaeda, especially since uh, September 11, 2001, ISIS has emerged as a far more lethal, powerful, and organized terrorist group. And I uh, go back particularly harp on the point of strategic communication and propaganda, which the previous speaker also very aptly described. This is an aspect where ISIS has complete mastery right now, and it is able to rapidly expand its footprint by using internet and social media. I thought it would be pertinent, for, particularly for friends from China, to have a look at this particular table on the screen. This is just an uh, approximation of the number of attacks that Bangladesh has faced since the end of September, so in the last 90-day period. It started with the murder of an Italian citizen, not very far from this hotel, and uh, since then it has continued unabated, and most recently, as late as Friday, we had a suicide attack in an Ahmadiyya mosque in Rajshahi, in the northwest of the country, which has again been claimed by ISIS. It is therefore a very serious issue that in the last 90 days, nine attacks have so far been claimed by ISIS. But some of the attacks here have not been claimed by ISIS, but have been also been carried out by local <coughs> groups. But I'd like to repeat, nine attacks have been claimed by ISIS in the last 90 day period. So that is an average of three attacks every month. Uh, I'm very sad to say that in no other country in South Asia, there has been so many attacks claimed by ISIS in such a short period of time, or for that matter, Southeast Asia. So I would just like to underscore the kind of grave challenge that we are faced with in Bangladesh, and therefore the aspect of cooperation attains greater importance. I would just like to briefly touch upon how Bangladeshi groups are also linked with transnational terrorist organizations. So the two major terrorist organizations in Bangladesh, Harkatul Jihad Islami Bangladesh and the Jamaatul Mujahideen Bangladesh, are both essentially products of the war in Afghanistan between 1979 and 1989. These groups, both these groups were formed in the 90s and have maintained strong connections with other groups, including, among others, uh, Al-Qaeda, and also groups in India and Pakistan, uh, groups in Southeast Asia, and some tenuous links also with groups like the East Turkestan Islamic Movement. So the Afghanistan factor is therefore very significant when we analyze the transnational linkages of these groups. Because the connections that were formed in the battlefields of Afghanistan when all of them were part of a major of uh, the fight against the forces of the former Soviet Union, later translated into operational linkages between these organizations. So when we talk about uh, the threat of terrorism today facing Bangladesh, it is not a threat that originates or culminates only in Bangladesh. This threat also has an imprint for other countries, and in an increasingly globalized world, if one country is affected by terrorism, it can quickly destabilize the wider region or even beyond the region. We also see increasing competition playing out in Bangladesh and the South Asian region between ISIS and another group called Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent. For instance, in Bangladesh we have seen both these two outfits competing with each other, trying to stage and claim attacks. So for when we plan our national security, this is emerging as a key challenge. And this will, uh, going forward, have an impact across the region and into China as well. Uh, for instance, the if we look at the Bangkok bomb blast, which happened in August, we later learned that the mastermind of that bomb blast, uh, who, according to some police reports, was a Chinese national, actually transited through Bangladesh and subsequently went to Syria. So this is, these are, this is one manifestation of the kind of transnational linkages that terrorist organizations can have and therefore 
clearly increases the need for cooperation between our two friendly countries in terms of counter-terrorism and radicalization. Now coming to the aspect of cooperation, why do we need to cooperate? Let me just reiterate some points which have already been made, but I would like to proffer the Bangladeshi perspective on it. First of all, radical groups have no boundary and can move through any national boundary easily. Radical groups are not bound by bilateral feuds, by legal regimes or anything like that. They actually have the kind of seamless cooperation that states can only dream of. And that, uh, while philosophically speaking, might be a good thing because we, all, we are always talking about cooperation, but it creates a significant challenge for us 